Um, Handle's looking a bit long on this, but oh, I will stick with it. We can sort that out later on. So that's the modelling of my refined glass done. I was just about to drop the floor in when I forgot when I've done that. So we're going to add a plane for the floor. So there's the floor. Um, intersecting right in the middle of our lens. Why is it doing that? It's because I put it in the wrong place. So I'm going to select the camera. What tends to happen in Cheetah actually, if you select one object and then you add another object, it will place a new object in the hierarchy of objects that you've already got going on. So if you select the camera, that's kind of considered the group. So let's add a plane. Switching back to my camera. You can see we've got our plane on. It looks like it's positioned right. So mine's too small. I'm going to go for something like five. Five. Let's have a look. That's pretty much there. So that's all our modelling done now. Happy with that. It's time to start doing some textures. I'm going to save before I forget. I'll just call it M for the sake of speed. So let's get some textures on the go. So we're only really going to need three. Um, start with the special ones. So we're going to have. We use Cheetah's default glass. So if you go to the um, add material glass, the glass. And we'll just drag that onto the lens. And let's use one of the metals. Uh, let's go for silver. So our material metal silver. Let's just drag that where we want it. So we want it on that frame there. We want it on the handle. We want it on our box that forms the particles. And we want it on the actual mesh object, which is this cylinder here. Um, and then one more material for the floor, which is just a standard material. Now, here, you're going to need to grab yourself a decent texture image. I happen to have one, and I can't remember where I got it from. Um, there's loads around. If you have a quick look on the Tutor 3D forum, you'll find people posting all kinds of links to where they've got textures from, things like that. I'm going to load mine in. So, it's loaded in there, we've got a little preview, and we've got preview on that material there. We can drag it onto our plane, and we start to see something happen. Um, just a quick change to this material. So I've got my material sector, I'm just going to jump into the node, the scary node editor. Um, I don't really know how to work the node editor, I'll probably only have to do a few things with it. Um, what I'm going to do is apply a simple bump map. So we're going to take the colour from this image we've got here, and turn it into the bump map, and just about see that something's happened there. And switch back to the 3D view. And on my material, I'm just going to kill the specular. So specular from white to black. And black will get rid of the specular altogether on that one. Um, so that's our materials done. Next thing to do is start to set up our camera. We're going to need radiosity, um, which is pretty much a standard on any any render that you want to look any way, shape or form real. Um, so I'm going to add that and leave it set to ambient occlusion. Sample 400 will do for now. We're also going to need an HDRI. And that is because we're using glass. And glass, to look good, needs something reflecting in it. Um, and quick ways to use an HDRI. I'm going to use one of the default ones that comes with Cheetah. So I'm typing in Pano. I'm going to go for Entrance Hall. So go for entrance, so I'm going to leave it on in the background, which is not something I always do. And I'm going to rotate it a bit. I happen to know that this doesn't look great on its default rotation. Um, rotating your HDRI is trial and error. Just hit the render button and see what it looks like. I'll try that on a rotation on the 90. So, camera in place. Radio City Tag HDRI. I'm going to just throw an extra light into this thing. So I'm, going in fact, I'm going to jump to the perspective camera for a minute. I tend to use perspective camera to move around my scene um, and just look at things the way I need to and I can always jump back to my main camera one as my render cam. So let's have a light and I'm going to go for an area light and you notice since we've added the area light the whole scene's gone black which isn't ideal. Um, I'll sort that out in a minute just while I position that light um, I'm going to leave it like that for the time. So looking at, see, I'm going to bring that light over here, probably a little bit higher up, 
and I'll rotate it so it's pointing towards the magnifying glass. Just bring it back a touch. There's a few things I'm going to change here. I'm going to change the samples on the shadow. I'm going to change them to 32. You can see that's reflected in there. Just going to just change it ever so slightly. Now I'm going to get my scene back to looking what it actually should look like. I'm going to click the home tag of that light and I'm going to switch off visible in editor. Right. Hey presto, we've got some light. Um, and I think we're almost at a stage ready to do our first test render. Just one thing on our lens, um, which is made of glass obviously, we just need to add a render tag. And well, I can never remember which one this is. I think the one that we need to check is visible and radio city. And I think we're just about. Well, there's one more render tag actually that I remember. Anywhere where you use a kind of um, an actual image and one of the textures, it's always a good idea to add a render tag and uncheck filtered textures. Filter textures seems to, I don't know why it does this, it seems to kind of blur your texture very slightly. So if you uncheck that, it just makes it a little bit sharper. And I'm going to jump up the render settings for you guys so you can see this a little bit better. And we're 1280, 960. You don't need to do this, this is purely so you guys can see my render. Um, 500 out, 64480 is going to be tiny uh, on the video that I am recording here. Let's give that a render and see what's happening. And you can see something else that I'm working on. Um, can, I'll show you that while we're rendering that. It's just a little funky thing that I've been playing with. It's kind of fun to model. Nowhere near finished yet, but hopefully I'll get there sometime. Anyway, jumping back to our render that we're doing at the moment. Oh, I've just spotted something that I need to change, but um, I'm going to leave it rendered because I'm going to show you how to correct that in a minute. Okay, so you can see this render's kind of coming along now. On my slow MacBook Pro that's a few years old now, these things kind of take a little bit longer to render than what I would like. Um, but there's a problem, a massive problem on this render. Um, uh, the magnifying glass all looks pretty good. The floor looks absolutely horrendous. It's massive. It's miles too big. I'm going to show you how to sort that out now. So I'm actually going to stop that render because there's no point going on. I can see that things are kind of shaping up the way I want them to be with the exception of that floor and um, so we'll come back to that so how are we going to sort the floor out well what we're going to do is click on our material actually on our floor object that we've got going on and we're going to mess with the uv scale i'm going to up that to three and you see that that has been reflected in in the 3d view um, you could go more it's, it's kind of a matter of matching up how big the magnifying glass would be in comparison to this. I think three is roughly where we need to be on that one. And I don't think there's anything else I need to say at this point. I'm just going to jump back to that half finished render for a minute. So looking at this kind of half finished render, the metal material looks fine, the edges all look okay, the handle's shaping up alright. I can just about left enough of that and to see that it looks like it's going to be okay. Um, the light, the area light could probably have been a bit brighter, but other than that, most things are quite. So I'm just going to brighten up that area light just very slightly. I'm going to jump the intensity to 2 on that. I will see nothing because I've got that checked too. So it's not visible in the editor. I should put that on. We can kind of start to see what that's doing, it's not that helpful to be honest. Um, we sorted out our floor, and let's give it another render and see where we're at. So I'm just going to change the angle slightly and just come slightly more on top. Okay, let's hit the render. Okay, so render is finishing up now, and I'm looking pretty good, pretty happy with that. Um, Glass is looking good. You can see curving the grain of the wood here a little bit, which kind of should be doing. Handles maybe a little bit long, but it, it looks alright. You know how to kind of sort that out. I don't think I need to show you how to do that right now. Um, surface is looking good. I'm going to show you 
just quickly go back to the document and show you a couple of things that you could possibly look at changing to help you out a little bit. So, things that you could look at if you're not quite getting the right results are number one, switching your HDR image or HDRI, whatever you want to call it. Um, different HDRIs give completely different renders. I mean, totally different. Even the two that come bundled with Cheetah and give massively different um, lighting setups, really, and the renders are completely different, so give that a try. Rotate, don't forget to rotate your HDR right away, you've got it kind of rotated, um, really makes a difference, so, you know, don't be afraid of rotating it to try and get the right render out. Um, other things you can look at doing, obviously changing your textures, don't be afraid to mess about with the default ones, um, there's some good kind of rusty gold metals, things like that, and play with some of your own. Maybe have a tinker with a node system, it is quite complicated. I'd probably, at this stage, I'd say I'd go for, I'd avoid these woods, I don't, they don't seem to come out that real for me. If they do for you, great. Um, I tend to go for a more kind of image, image based one. Um, and, and that's it. See what you come up with. Um, you know, hopefully you come up with something cool. Uh, no doubt it'll be better than mine. Um, but thanks for watching guys, and uh, I hope you've learned something. Thanks a lot.